Okay, has the clock been reset? Hello everyone. My name is Malik L, host of Health Awareness Talk for Sir Broadcast. Today we are talking about creating the ultimate athlete through aging medicine and martial practices. I have three panel, uh, three people on my panel today. Um, Rick, uh, can you say everyone hello to everyone, Rick? Hello, everybody. I'm Rick Panico. I teach uh, Hungar Kung Fu in Mooresville, North Carolina. Wow, that's terrific, Rick. What is Hungar Kung Fu? Uh, Hungar Kung Fu is a style of Kung Fu that comes from the Silom temples. Uh, Hungar actually means Hung family style, um, and it's a series of movements uh, mimicking uh, five different animals. Um, it teaches you how to strengthen your body and defend yourself, and through the use of our Qigong breathing and our stance training, it helps give the body good uh, strength and stamina. Also, the Qigong breathing helps um, to develop your bones and your um, tendons, Oh, give okay. you strong bones and tendons. That's super. Now, the reason I got you on the show today was because uh, Hungar is good for injury prevention or for... Uh, Hungar is good for energy prevent, uh, injury prevention or for strengthening of the bones, tendons, ligaments, that type of stuff. Uh, is that true? Definitely. It's most definitely true. Um, through our slow, slow practice and the use of uh, the different stances that we do, it helps uh, strengthen the joints in your body. And as every athlete knows, your joints are probably the most important part of your body, um, if you have a weak joint, then that's what's going to cause injuries. And if you do this type of training and the Qigong breathing and you do happen to get injured, um, your recovery time will be cut in half probably, if not more than that, by the use of the Qigong breathing that we do. Wow, that's super. I saw I had one of my football players, football friends, ask if you go into a movable stance, uh, would he or anybody be able to knock you out of it by tackling you? Um, hey, at my age, I'd like to give it a try. But, yes, the stances are developed to uh, um, help strengthen the play, to give you a balance, awareness, and um, give you that stability. Um, all the power that, that we generate in our forms and our techniques comes from the ground through our feet up through the waist and then it's exerted out through the body. So, yes, these particular stances would help make your body immobile, like hitting a brick wall. Wow, that is super. <laughs> well, thank you, Rick. Okay, um, what do you think about that, Marshall? Well, I believe that, that kind of sounds like deja vu. I remember hearing that from my coaches, uh, you know, be well grounded. I uh, always keep the feet moving. It's always, you know, they connected to the ground, and uh, it, it all sounds very familiar. <laughs> okay, that's super. Okay, Michael, um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, my name is Michael Chitowski. I'm the owner of East Earth Trade Winds. We're an herb, Chinese herb company out in California, and I'm also an, a licensed acupuncturist, and my acupuncture business is called Reading Acupuncture Healthcare, and we're in Redding, California, which is in the northern end of California. And I have been um, practicing acupuncture and studying herbal medicine for 30 years now. Okay, that's super. And the reason I got you on the show is something called Three Treasure Herbalisms. I have I talk to a lot, of, uh, quite a lot of parents and stuff out there, and they always come to me asking me about herbs and dif about different foods and stuff that uh, kids and also athletes have come to me about um, things that they can do for peace of mind, um, for uh, make better grades in school or think better out in the field, and also for better, for better energy. There are herbs out there that help with that and foods out there that help with that, correct? That's correct, yeah. And, you know, when using them for adults and children, it's a little bit different. You're going to vary the dosage on, on the herbs that you take. An adult, of course, due to body weight, would take much more than a child. But a common way that um, is used in Chinese culture is to cook with the food, to cook with the herbs, and, and put it in your food. So when they make soups or stews or things like that, or, or um, even, um, for example, cooking turkey, like um, last night we were getting a turkey ready, and 
we've got some uh, jujube, which is a chi tonic, which we're going to put inside the turkey, which is pretty much not traditional American, but um, it's going to have a Chinese flavor to it, along with some good um, shiitake mushrooms, which boost the immune system. So you can use different things like that. Um, for peace of mind, a common one that... Um, that everybody is familiar with is the lisi berries, and though you may not know it under that name, the, um, the Chinese name is go chi tzu, mm -hmm. and the common name which is sold under nowadays is called goji berries, and those are kind of like a tasty, slightly sweet, slightly tart, raisin-like berry, but they're very good. They, um, they're a blood tonic in terms of Chinese medicine, and um, the blood is like the, the substance of all life. If we don't have blood, of course, we don't live. But the leafy berries will um, not only build the blood, but they will also help um, calm the spirit or center the spirit, so it's help develop a little bit of your psychic ability in, in the sense that maybe calming kind of thing. And that can be put in food. With children, you could sprinkle that on um, cereal, and they would eat it like raisins. Or as adults, um, you know, we can cook with it. We can put it at it to our tea and then um, drink our tea and then eat the berries afterwards. They're very tasty. Um, another one that is commonly used in um, Chinese culture is called Aurelis longanae, or long yan ro, which is a dragon eye fruit. And that one is also a blood tonic, and it's also good for the shen or spirit. Um, as far as building energy, there's a number of different herbs. Um, ginseng is probably the one herb that people are most familiar with, so we wouldn't necessarily put that in our food. Um, but some milder ones are, uh, for example, astragalus is well known. It's an immune system booster and gives you energy. But um, you can add that to, to soups or stews, things like that. Astragalus is, really doesn't have much of a taste, so it's kind of neutral, though. It, it comes in long slices that look kind of like a tongue depressor. And mm -hmm. um, when it's in your soup or stew, you don't, you don't eat it after it's cooked. You just let it, you let it steep in there. And then you would throw it away afterwards, but but that is something you can add to your to your food. Or like I said, the um, the jujube, which is um, the red dates, which is also a chi tonic. That is an energy tonic, and um, those can be put in in soups or stews. Or like I said, we're we're going to be adding some to the Thanksgiving turkey that we're going to have. Mm -hmm. So there's a number of number of things that you can use the, with the three treasure herbalism using tonic herbs, herbs that are meant to. Um, boost your immunity, um, to the help with longevity, um, make you feel better, um, give you clarity of thought, and um, other healthy beneficial effects. Okay, that sounds super. Okay, going over to um, Yadi, tell us a little bit about yourself. And the reason I got you on the show is on the show is to talk about strengthening your immune system and also accelerating recovery time. Okay, what's going on, fellas? Yadi Alameen, the Qigong therapist. A little bit about me. I'm um, eight times certified in medical Qigong. I was a seven year apprentice for an acupuncturist in Chicago, seventh generation in traditional Chinese medicine. I did not go to school to become an acupuncturist because I enjoyed Qigong and teaching people how to do it themselves. I run a practice in Charlotte called Charlotte Reflexology where my therapy is somewhat in between massage and acupuncture, but there's no needle, nothing invasive, and the principles are the same as the other two gentlemen on the phone, using the chi in the blood to affect the health. Okay, that's super. Now, again, everyone, I want you to really understand out there, uh, those who's listening into the program, there is a difference between uh, Eastern philosophy as far as how they approach everything and Western philosophy and how they approach everything. Most of the time in the Western world, we look at things like our muscles. You have reached Rick Panico in the Hungar Kung Fu Academy. A lot of times in the Western, the Western world, we look at working from the things from the outside in. We look towards working at the symptoms, getting rid of symptoms instead of getting to the root of the cause. Why is in Eastern philosophy, we um, basically what we look for is developing things, uh, taking care of a problem from the root and also developing cultivation from the root and by taking care of the root the symptoms of all uh, symptoms that actually come from that if you like to call them sense or we would like to call the benefits actually is uh, increased vitality 
health and also for physical fitness uh so this basically is what our show is today for you watching we want to imagine yourself approaching your child approaching your athletic um athletic uh training uh, from an eastern perspective through eastern eyes you got blood a lot of y'all out there when i ask you what it takes in order to nourish your blood in order to increase the circulation because the blood is a lot you don't know anything about doing that what it takes in order to build strong tendons and ligaments what it takes in um in um in order to build your bones and stuff you don't know much about doing that when i talk about different herbs and stuff like that in order to give that not designer drugs it's natural straight from the earth herbs that you can eat in order to increase your chances and school in order to increase your chances out there in the field in order for reaching your dreams of becoming pro or going to olympics you don't know much about this this is why i got the people here on this panel to be able to answer these questions and everything about this and i also got my friend uh marshall davis he's also on the, on here too because he's been an athlete he's actually been there he's been injured he's been in school and stuff so we're going through uh the different things that we can do for Marshall and for people like Marshall and, the, and the, if the things that you could do um, from a child all the way for going up to the pros in order for you to give you the edge that you need in order to, in order for you to succeed. Um, Marshall. Yeah. See, Marshall, he started off uh, being playing in sports back when he was just four years old. Um, this is for starting off with soccer. Am I correct, Marshall? That's right. Okay, Marshall, at four years old, what type of exercises and things uh, and food were you eating back during that time? If you uh, can remember. I remember from being four years old. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we did, uh, of course, like the run in place. You know, that's uh, one that's pretty much easy enough for, you know, kids that age to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, some form of kind of jumping jack. We did do more uh, cardio. Cardio more more than sex, we do more cardio as as a, as a kid, and uh, just get the heart rate going. Yes, you did a lot of cardio, and when he asked you uh, anything about the type of foods that you needed to eat in order to be successful, was there anybody even tell you about that? Uh, the the most thing I remember at, at that age is uh, we at halftime, uh, uh, we always have a mom that she'd bring a big bag of uh of oranges. And oh. we all be on you after practice or if she has time. There's like a, a little pictures booth there. <laughs> That's the only kind of nutrition that we have. We really didn't tell why we just, we just did it this way. And, yes, and that's exactly the point I'm trying to make is that, a lot, you know, as far as the trip for our kids and what about even in high school, Marshall? Did, what did they cover about the different foods and different things that you need to repair the body and feed the body? Actually, high school is actually worse. We didn't, we didn't have any, anything. We just kind of, everybody was on their own. Yeah, and that's that's exactly what I see among these schools too. They don't have no nutrition, no recovery abilities, uh, nothing as far as strengthening up the tendons and ligaments because you're only as strong as what your tendons and ligaments are. The most you probably got back in high school and younger than that is just weight training and a little stretching. Am I right? Correct. That's that. Okay, so a lot of people out there, if you're listening to the show, you can actually give yourself the edge by learning Eastern philosophy in order to develop the things that you are missing, which is Eastern nutrition, the things that you need in order to develop your, uh, develop your, uh, develop your spirit, develop your mind under stress, the foods you need to eat in order for you to make better grades in school. Because if you don't eat the better, if you don't make good grades in school, you can't make it to the pros really. I mean, it's a lot harder if you're failing. And then the energy that you need in order for you to both go to both to practice and do what you need to do in school. For strengthening of the uh, of tendons, bones, tendons, and ligaments and things, you got the Hungar Kung Fu, which specializes in um, strengthening up in tendons, uh, tendons, ligaments, and uh, tendons, ligaments, and bone development. Am I right, Rick? Definitely, yes. Okay, and then also for uh, for accelerated um, uh, strengthening up the immune system and also for accelerated your uh, your healing ability, we also got Tibetan Chi, uh, Tibetan medical Qigong, which I guarantee 
nobody really knows about. And you got players out there who's just, who gets diseases and stuff that you hear about in the pros and stuff all the time. Uh, and they got to end their careers about. They got to end their careers because they do get sick. But there are particular exercises out there that's designed to increase your immune system to help you from not getting sick. And if you are sick, to get over it. Am I right, Yachty? Absolutely. I'm a living testimony to that. Yeah, uh, he had the mold problem or liver problem and by doing the Tibetan medical Qigong exercises. You got over that, right? Yeah, I, I went down about 30, 35 pounds. I only weighed about 155, and I went down to, you know, I was in about 115, 119 pounds when I went to the emergency room for uh, something I didn't even know was killing me. And, yeah, between... A little bit of uh, acupuncture and Qigong, I'm still alive. This is 14 years later, so, yeah, I, I, that's my life. Yeah, yeah, so there's certain movements that you can actually do that will increase your immune system that will help you to become, uh, speed up recovery to help you to be more resistant. Hold on. <coughs> no more tea. Oh. Uh-oh, lung excess. You know. That help you be more, um resistance towards disease hmm now the interesting thing is instead of when you got these kids going on through treasure herbalism when you got these kids going around here being rudy unruly and all that other type stuff instead of going back to nutrition because we are what you eat they go give them a um they go give them a pill ritalin uh adhd and all that other stuff am i am i right fellas oh gosh yes That's exactly so terrible. yeah yeah terrible it's very what you got. and only the problem is is nutrition now back when we was growing up we didn't have a problem with Ritalin with attention deficit disorder and all that because we all ate healthy okay so instead of the first thing the very first thing I want y'all parents and athletes and whoever the very first thing I want you to ask yourself is what well, what is the problem with ADHD attention deficit disorder what is the problem with um uh, being unruly, running, what you call it everywhere. I tell you, going to three treasure herbalism, you basically say you got foods for your spirit, foods for your mind, and foods for your body. If you eat healthy, you're going to get all it. You're going to get a lot of all of it, like we did 20 years ago, okay, <laughs> when we had real food and didn't have to worry about. Sometimes I don't think we have an ADHD or, uh, or unruliness problem or whatever. We got an artificial food problem. Do y'all agree? Yes. yes. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. We got an artificial food problem. Artificial food makes for artificial people, and then you're wondering why they're not functioning the way that they're supposed to. Okay? No, yes. Preach. Yes. Yes. You got to return to source. You got to return to the earth. You got to, to go back to the basic building blocks, which is organic food not commercial food but organic food go to your farmer's market go to anything that says organic you start eating that within your body i guarantee your person your, your the problems and stuff that you got going on this will start to heal itself because the body can you cannot build a brick house without bricks and you cannot build a healthy body without healthy complete food in order to build that healthy body <laughs> And that is just the ba that is just the basic bottom line of uh, nutrition. And here it is, y'all. Uh, you as an athlete, you as a, a parent, you having your child to do these sports, and they building down, they tearing down all this muscle tissue, building, uh, tearing down all this stuff, and then you give them artificial food to rebuild it back, and you wonder why they getting injured. You wonder why they're not doing good in school. You wonder why they're talking back to you and acting up and all this other type stuff. And you wonder why they're not being successful in life. And it all comes down to you are what you eat. If you take care of what you eat, it helps to modify the way that you think. It makes it easier to think and make the right decisions, you know. So here we go with Mike when we talk about the three treasure herbalism, when we talk about the Xi representation of spirit, when we talk about the Qi representation of mind, when we talk about the Jing representation of your physical body and all this other type of stuff. When you eat these things, you get better as an individual. And if you can start your child on three, tre three treasure herbalism nutrition, or eating for these three areas. Now I want you to think about just not eating for your health parents. Now, I don't want you to think about just trying to eat for your health professional athletes or a good student trying to go for your athletes. I want you to think 
how do I eat for my spirit? What foods, like my man said, like um, like Michael said, about eating uh, goji berries, what you call it, the happy berry, which puts a smile on your face all the time so you won't be stressed out and you'll be good for the game. The dragon knife fruit, you eat that and stuff. May, again, you're feeling good. You're not stressed out for the test and all the other type stuff. Um, you talk about um, for the chi, which is your mind, for your mental focus and everything. Eating foods like walnuts, okay? Walnuts, if you crack it open, looks like a brain, and you eat it, it's good for your brain. Scientists say when you eat it, it got the necessary stuff in there for you to, uh, in order for you to feel good. We got ginkgo bilboa, 24% flavicide, increases the amount of oxygen in your blood, in your blood and everything. It goes to the brain and makes you smarter, makes you more awake. And of course, you're going to drink plenty of water with that. And then you got the uh, ginseng and stuff that you can take for your body. That helps to balance everything out the way that it's supposed to. But then you got the regular food and stuff on uh, regular foods on top of that if I say Michael I said if I say Michael right now what type of regular organic foods can we eat besides goji berries and dragon eyes in order for you to be uh, not to be depressed but you for you feel good do you know of any you know I think one of the, the main things is that um, we have to cook our foods everybody goes out and buys packages nowadays it's like how many people um, make spaghetti sauce. You go, you know, if you go to a supermarket, it might be organic sp spaghetti sauce, but you still don't make it yourself for the most part that I see. So people need to get back in the kitchen. And, you know, the kitchen's part of the, um, part of the family. And that's an important thing, too, because people don't interact as much nowadays, which is part of development of a child that's real important, too. So you get the kids, you teach them how to, how to cook food, you can learn, teach them how to peel an onion or do something like that or, or uh, even make your own noodles. I mean, that's something you can do, get some flour and make your own noodles and stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, we got to get away from processed foods. I think you've hit the nail on the head about this nutrition thing. It's a, it's a big aspect of um, our culture that we're missing, and that's why we're having problems with childhood obesity and, like you said, the, the inattention. The kids have the behavioral problems, too many um, processed foods, too much... Um, high fructose corn syrup, um, just bad eating habits. And we really need to get people back in the kitchen and, you know, buying foods and making stuff and opening a cookbook and cooking. And then, as I was mentioning before, you can start adding in some of these different herbs to your, your food, too. Like I was saying, one of the, the, the mushrooms you often get in Chinese restaurants, which is the shiitake mushroom, very good for the immune system. Um, it's something that, you know, you can eat. They're very tasty. You can put them in a lot of different kinds of foods. But um, but that's something people can learn to use. That is super. Rick, can you add anything to that about foods and stuff that you can eat in order to nourish the body, in order to nourish the spirit, mind, and body? Okay. Yachty. Yes. Yadi, what foods can you eat in order to nourish the spirit, mind, and body? I'm picking your brain. Yadi, can you hear me? Okay, still live on the air. All right, everyone. I'd like to tell you, it takes live food in order to create a live body okay when you boil when you cook the food and all that other type of stuff you take the nourishment you take the life force literally out of it or you don't get as much as you can stay close to raw as you po as, as possible my friend my uh my uh me mentor or person i really like growing up was jack lalane okay one of the rules is 80 percent raw that's 80 percent uncooked why why 80 percent raw why 80 percent cooked because when you cook the food the life force leaves out of it we are energy beings okay on the quantum level we are all energy if you look on this screen right here if you look under something called curly in photography this is how we look this is literally what we're eating we eat energy Okay, literally that's what we do. We leak energy. Curlian is spelled K-I-R-L-E-A-N. Put down curlian, put down food. Take a look on the internet of exactly what you're eating. Processed food and all that other type of stuff is dead. Dead food creates a dead body. 
I like eating my meat and all that other type stuff. It really tastes good. Helps to build some protein. But what actually gives you your life force is actually number one fruit and your two vegetables and stuff like that. The more energy that you put into your body, the more you better that you're going to feel. The faster that your body's going to heal itself. The clearer that your mind able to think. The faster that you're able to think. Making good grades in your school and all that other type stuff. So you got to remember live food equals a live body. If you got a problem with your kids got a problem not excelling in sports the way that you're supposed to take a look at your nutrition because we are definitely what we eat what are you eating and then you got to look at yourself give you the 30 day rule every 30 days you look back at yourself and say hey is my energy level is my level of stress is my level of uh, mental clarity is my energy levels higher this month than what it was last month and you have to continue it's a lifetime process right now I can do 100 push 80 to 100 one arm push-ups on either arm and I can bench press 405 pounds I could do those things uh, called dragon flags lifting up your whole body or what you call it just leave, lifting off your shoulder and I can leg press over a thousand pounds a lot of people ask me like Malik how you able to do these incredible things because they don't know nobody else or very few people out there who's able to do it and i tell them because i walk the talk baby you know i'm a certified fitness trainer i've been doing this since 2000 and 2000 and some change or whatever i've studied eternal martial arts learn how to get in the horse stances to develop my tendons my ligaments my bones and all this other type of stuff so this is not a show of which i'm just having people come on here and just tell you this and tell you that the reason that i have more here people because i know that it works and i want them to break it down a lot better than what i could because that's what they specialize in as a personal trainer i just specializes in results i know that the herbs with the spirit mind and body that they actually work because i live it i have my mom and not my sisters and everything they do the reishi mushroom they do the goji berries and stuff like that and guess what clarity of mind and we all know we everybody know if you take ginkgo biboa, it's going to increase your your uh, ability to be able to think by 20. Uh, it's going to increase your ability to be able to think for mental uh, for mental clarity and stuff. You heard that, but are you doing it? You know about ginseng. You know about ginseng to help you to uh, about getting energy and all that other type stuff. You know about it, but do you do it? You got to focus on a nutritional program to optimize your spirit mind and body and a lot of people the only thing that they think about is eating to be healthy but they're not thinking on those levels and it takes those three because you can have mental clarity and be good in school and you can be good in sports and still be a bad person and you be a bad person because you're not eating right for you not eating for foods based on that level and it's just that simple people like i said i could do 101 on push-ups on either arm my left or my right and the reason I'm able to do that is because I didn't practice tendon ligament development for years using uh, hungar based techniques for my for my uh, seafood for my instructor. So I know that this works. Why? You can see a lot of people who are skinny that's actually stronger than muscle people because the tendons and ligaments are thicker or stronger. That's why you see these skinny guys able to win in these arm wrestling competitions and all that other type stuff because the tendon and ligaments strong. You see a lot of these kung fu people, they don't look like they're strong and a lot of these fighters are all skinny and stuff. They don't look like they're strong, but due to their tendon and ligament development, they be able to beat guys twice their size. Why? Because your muscles is only as strong as its weakest link, which is your tendons and ligaments. That's all. And that's the secret. When you see a lot of these hung guard people, they don't look like they can fight, but they grab a hold of you. And then if they grab a hold of you, you can feel you know that you're in for something. A lot of these boxers and what you call again. It's tendon ligament development. And we go over here with Yadi, what you call it. What's going on with Tibetan medical chi kung? Again, a lot of people are like, oh, you talking about if I just move in a certain way that it cures myself of disease and all this other type stuff? And I say, I show sure enough, it does. A lot of people don't know that your lymphatic system is responsible for cleaning out the uh, toxins and stuff out your system. Okay? And, um,. Is responsible for cleaning out the toxins in your system and just like we got a heartbeat in order to circulate the blood throughout the entire body the way that our lymphatic system works as far as our lymph nodes and the lymph and all the other that's responsible for cleaning out the toxins is through movement that's the heartbeat each one of the Tibetan medical qigong exercises that you do moves the lymph 
uh, for a particular part of the body and helps to exercise your lymph system. So if you know that the lymph system... You have reached the maximum time permitted to record. To send your message, press 1 at any time. Well, that's super. To listen to your message, press 2. Now, if we know that the lymph system... For more options, press 4. To cancel, press star. Don't we love it? <laughs> now, if we know that the lymph system is only... Uh, the lymph system is to responsible for message, moving... If we know that the lymph system is responsible for moving all the toxins and stuff to our entire body, and that the uh, that the only way that our lymph system is actually activated is through movement, wouldn't it just make sense to act, uh, ask yourself what type of movements that it takes? Send your message. Press one at any time. Wouldn't it just make better sense to ask yourself if uh, what movements will work? Uh, if for what exercise will work particular on a particular part of the body in order to move the lymph there, okay? And that's what the Chinese basically have doing uh, on the other side. Now my producer said that we got everyone back again. Let's go through our panel. Uh, Michael, you there? I am here. Yeah, okay. I'm back. I, I got cut off. I guess sometime there. I don't know um, when, but I'm here now. It's okay. We're gonna get you back in. Rick, you there? I think that's the one that went the voicemail. That's that's why you was hearing. Okay, Rick, what's your college? Try to hit him up again. Um, Yadi, you there? Yadi Alleman, the Chicago therapist. Super. Okay, Marshall, massage, massage Avenger, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, that lady, she was so disrespectful. What was that, sir? Just, I said yes, I'm here. I said, lady, she was she was popped right over you. <laughs> Oh, okay. I just, I'm just trying. I, I heard that voicemail. I couldn't hear you because the voicemail was there. It happens. It <laughs> happens. It happens. I mean, you know, was trying to get in contact. It dropped, and then we're trying to get in contact with somebody. All right. Basically, now we got Rick back. Okay, so we don't got Rick back. So we got um Yachty. Now tell me exactly. Now, I, I'm I'm having problems. I'm 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 probably like Marshall. Marshall. Yes, sir. Can you believe that that moving certain parts of the body in a certain way or whatever? Or first of all, you're a massage therapist. You know that. Can you confirm for me that the way the lymphatic system uh, is, the lymphatic system is responsible for getting rid of toxins out the body. Am I right? Correct. Okay. The way that the lymphatic system wa uh, works, um, Marshall, is by movement of the body, not through your heartbeat, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So I know that. So Yachty up over here. Yadi, the Chi Kung therapist, he's telling us, okay, is that the exercises and stuff that these Chinese people, that these Asian people, that these people in the East has developed exercises that can literally get rid of diseases. I mean, certain movements and stuff to get rid of diseases. Now, isn't that interesting? It's uh, very. Yeah, that's very. Yeah. That is very. Yadi, exactly how is that done? Oh, it's kind of simple. There's an old saying in Chinese that says, moving water never spoils. So if the idea is transposed into the body, your body is 75 to 80 percent water. Mm -hmm. Your blood and all the other humors, you know, the, uh, the lymph. So everything is water-based in the body. And when you understand that, you can use that principle to your advantage. Let's say if you have uh, a cold or a flu, you can do a certain set of exercises, like we use the five element exercises, actually from Tanglong Kung Fu, from uh, Brain Manus Kung Fu, a set I learned, to clear out the, uh, the lungs, the breathing passages. So the, uh, the restriction that you have in breathing, the congestion that you have can be eliminated in about five minutes just doing a certain set of exercises. Okay. You know, okay. It's a principle that when you move the body, when you get enough oxygen, when you get enough space from doing correct breathing, from using your bones to support your structure instead of your uh, muscles, that you don't get as tired and you can do um, much more work and, and much more you know, physical activity when you know how to efficiently use your body and you're not working against yourself. Mm. 
Okay. All right. All right. That's it. Again, like I was saying before. Now, my interest in uh, Tibetan medical Qigong is a lot of people out there that use designer enhancement drugs, which really messes your body up. You see a lot of people in the WWE or uh, well, just a lot of people in sports in general. They use steroids and pro hormones. And you probably everyone here has heard people get messed up with those. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. Yachty? Yep. Yeah. Marshall? Yep. Yeah, you hear people using steroids and stuff all the time. What about you, Michael? You hear people using steroids, pro hormones, and messing their body up? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's very detrimental. And then, you know, nobody really knows the long-term consequences other than they're probably going to get cancer. I mean, it's <laughs> probably the worst thing to, to get. But, um, you yeah, know, there's a lot of bad negative side effects from using that stuff. It's You know, you can't cheat Mother Nature. Or if you do, you're going to pay for it. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's the interesting thing about it. Rick, you on the phone yet? Okay, going back over to Yachty again. Now, see, that's the amazing thing. For any of y'all out there who use steroids or who have used steroids and wish to God that you haven't, who use pro hormones and wish to God that you had, now you're worried about you got arthritis in your joints and stuff from overdoing it. You got uh, you got potential for cancer and all that other type stuff. You got some type of liver damage and whatever like that that you actually got to work out that you got to work out um, on a regular basis that you got to constantly you got to watch. You got uh, kidney um, issues and stuff like that. Isn't that some of the symptoms of people who take steroids and pro hormones, people? Yeah, I mean, impotence, yep. rage, yep. baldness, premature aging. Um, there's there's a huge amount of hormonal side effects that, you know, when you change one hormone, you alter all of them. So you might not be sleeping. You know, the, the worst part about it is you've stunted, you've just stunted yourself. You know, you're not supposed to have an overabundance of one hormone in contrast to the other. You can really damage yourself permanently. Right. Well, that's the whole issue about pan dam uh, uh, damaging yourself permanently. Now, we see if I ask most of those people, did they have any type of program in store, a nutrition and exercise program that uh, helps to prevent or helps to strengthen your body uh, if you ever do it or after you have done it? All of them is going to going to say no. They haven't heard anything about that because they haven't heard of three treasure herbalism stuff that you can take in order for uh, in order to um, strengthen your spirit, soul, and body. Am I right, Michael? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and a lot of the um, the effects that they want can be achieved by using herbs that are safe. Um, and I want to use that word safe. Um, Carefully, because you can overdo it with herbs, too. It's one of those things where, you know, more isn't necessarily better. But if you take things according to the amounts you're supposed to, you can enhance your strength uh, and get really good effects and incre increase your reflexes, increase your speed, um, your visual acuity, things like that. Um, overall, improve your... your um, your physique and your physical well-being, and if you're an athlete, you can improve a lot of that. Without doing that, um, using those um, pharmaceutical-grade steroids or however wherever they make them, um, you know, in some some other lab. But um, but there's a lot of herbs that you know in Chinese medicine we've talked about some different herbs, the chi tonics and blood tonics. Um, yin tonics are an area that um, that nurture like the essential fluids of the body, which helps, for example, lubricate your joints. Um, but there's also a category called yang tonics, um, which are very powerful herbs. And one of those is um, deer antler. And they take the antler from, uh, they don't kill a deer, but they, they trim the antlers from the, the deer. But there, there are hormones in there. Um, and if you use a small amount, you don't like eat the whole thing, but it comes in usually small slices. It can be a very powerful tonic, which can really boost your, um, your energy level and increase your strength. Um, it's, the antler, for example, is very good for your um, your bones and muscles. Um, it's also good for your jing mm -hmm. um, and also good for your blood. So it's, it covers a wide range of things. There's other herbs like cordyceps, um, which is a, a very expensive mm -hmm. um, herb. Nowadays it's almost um, unaffordable. Mm -hmm. but, um, but the Chinese athletes use that a lot, have in the past, and, and they've um, really enhanced their performance because they use they use these herbs, and once again, they don't overdo it. It's not a more is better kind of thing. You use the right amount, you mm -hmm. stay healthy. 
um, if you use too much, of course, you can, you know, throw yourself off balance, too. But a lot of the, what are called the yang tonics, it's spelled Y-E-N-G. A lot of Americans pronounce it yang, but in China, Chinese it's pronounced yang. Um, the yang tonics are very powerful, and usually you need to take them along with, for example, a yin tonic to balance it, and then maybe add a qi or a blood tonic. So it's not common in Chinese medicine, with the exception of ginseng, that you use a single herb by itself. But um, but you'll mix it together into a formula, and there are a lot of uh, formulas that um, are available in um, pill form, for example, um, that you can take that, that can give you these strengthening effects. Um, and there's one that you can make up on your own. You can find there's lots of books that you can um, read. Um, there's one by Daniel Reed called A Handbook of Chinese Healing Herbs, which has uh, a lot of different formulas in there that tell you how to make them and and uh, improve your health, or improve if you want, you know, improve your um, your ability in sports or whatever. Um, how do you use those herbs to do that? Okay, that's absolutely true. So we know that the three treasure herbalism that these herbs help you actually to make you stronger. Yada, I'm gonna be with you in just one in just one minute. Now, Rick. Yes. Okay. That's one thing. Did you know that deer antler helps to strengthen your tendon and your ligaments? Um, I knew that the Chinese used the deer antler, but I wasn't really sure what it was used for. That's not part of my expertise, so I am learning a lot today. Yes. Um, now, I fell offline here for a minute, and I'm not sure if this was discussed, but you briefly mentioned it earlier, um, and, and we're talking about nutrition, and a lot of people are just thinking, okay, nutrition's food, 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 but um, I think one of the things that people need to understand is water. Uh, mm -hmm. Water is very, very important to the human body. We're over 70% water in our body, um, and there's too much Gatorade, too much soda, and too much Starbucks around today that people are forgetting to just drink a nice quenching glass of water to help replenish their body, replenish their joints, and and just take care of business that needs to be taken care of in your body. But that is absolutely true. Now, Rick, we're going to look at your uh, your hung guard training. Now, I want to know if you know these things. Now, am I am I right, uh, Michael, that uh, deer antler helps to strengthen tendon and li tendon and ligaments? Yeah, you're correct. Yeah, all right. It does so do that. that's what Rick's tra uh, training basically is on: is strengthening of the tendon and ten uh, tendon bone and ligament. Am I right, Rick? Correct, yes. So you learned something today that how if you're taking deer antler and stuff, you can actually help to accelerate your training, right? Yes, definitely. Okay, That's a very super. good um, um, something to know. Yeah. Very good. Also what students and myself. Exactly. Also what Michael was talking about was cordyceps. Did you know that cordyceps is actually it's a fungi or um, uh was when the mush when the uh, caterpillar is actually disappear and it leaves this fungi stuff that if you eat it it actually can enhance if you eat it it increases the amount of oxygen that's in your blood uh so that you're able to train for longer periods of time. Am I right on I that? Have had no idea of that either. Yeah, is that it's true, Michael? Very educational show. Is that true? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. The cordyceps is um, a fantastic herb, and just like you said, it's um, it's a fungus that um, grows on a caterpillar. And when you see the the cordyceps itself, um, it look, looks like a caterpillar form, but it's actually the plant that um, has taken kind of taken over the shape of the caterpillar's body. Uh, but yeah, it's an extremely powerful herb. Um, you know, nowadays they use the cordyceps mycelium. They kind of they grow it. I'm not quite exactly sure how they grow it, but if you get the um, the one in um, you know from comes from the the high mountain areas like around Tibet and stuff like that, extremely ex expensive. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We used to carry it, um, you know, 15 years ago, and it, I stopped carrying when it got to about 120 dollars an ounce for this stuff. And nowadays it's nowadays it's like you know five thousand dollars an ounce or ten thousand ounce. It's extremely expensive. But um, but a very powerful herb to take. But you can still find it. Like I said, they take the cordyceps mycelium, which is less expensive, and um, you can you know buy it in capsules and stuff like that, and um, you still get a, a very good effect from it. Um, it's very good for the lungs. It's good for the kidneys. Helps build chi in the body. Um, you know, basically, you want to use it to improve performance. And and if you have, have any lung problems, breathing problems, things like that, it's excellent for the lungs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
and also that and literally when we go to we are what we eat okay there's really nothing out there stronger than an ant okay the ant gonna live many times his own weight all right so they got something that's a, a liquid form of ant act ant extract and ant extract actually helps to make you stronger uh, how is that michael you know um i'm not sure about the, the stronger part of that but but i have used it before i was in um china probably 10 years ago or something and i found some at the airport they just sold um bags of ants and i bought some red ants and some black ants and um you know what, what they're good for, though, is they're good for joint pain. They're just amazing for joint pain. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a, a very powerful, there's, I think, I can't remember the type of acid in there, like a formic acid or something like that mm-hmm. in there, but, um, but it can make pains just disappear. Um, it's kind of kind of uh, funky when you, when you take a teaspoon of ants and chew them up and they kind of get caught between your teeth and it mm-hmm. looks kind of funny, but, um, but, the, but the effect is great. I, at that time, I was giving it to my patients, but I kind of try to cram them into capsules to sort of convince them to, to eat it that way. Um, but yeah, it, it quite possibly it could, um, could help with the, the strength, but I'm not familiar with that. But I do know that, you know, if you have joint pains and muscle pains, um, fantastic remedy for that. Okay. You hear that, you hear that, Rick? Yes, definitely. Okay. Now, the reason that I mention that is because my martial arts experience and stuff, you know, practicing and stuff, we uh, use uh, the deer antler helps to develop. Uh, it, it can double your time, okay, uh, depending on the quality that you got. You are literally what you eat. If you're not taking stuff inside your body to help to heal the tendons and ligaments and stuff, tendons and ligaments won't be here to get healed at a slower weight. Just about like you put protein in your body to build your muscles. What are you putting in your body to build the tendons and ligaments? If you're not putting the material in, the mater- your uh, body's not going to repair itself as quick as, would it, as, as it would if, as if you would have that material actually in you. When we look at the cordyceps and everything, we're looking at it says, hey, the more oxygen that you got in your blood, whether it be from uh, cheese stacking or breathing in oxygen before the end in order to increase the amount of oxygen, or very simple, increase the amount of ginkgo biboa, 24% flavor side, in addition at the cordyceps or whatever with that, and you naturally increase the amount of oxygen in your body. Also for that ant, instead of a pre-workout supplement, you can also take the ant extract or whatever I've taken it you know when I actually could afford it and have actually had amazing results from it better workouts and everything and the interesting thing about herbs is is that the longer that you use them the better they get in the system the better your body's able to use them and the better they get am I right Michael yes correct you know the herbs are they're crude drugs but basically you know another way to look at them is a superfood they're they're have um, elements in it in them that are concentrated which have immense benefit to us and once again if you use them properly um, you you need to have some respect um, when you take these things or use them um, you know but you want to build up your body strength you want to improve your longevity or enhance your longevity Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. improve your overall health and um, and it's very important to do that yeah, this definitely. And like I said, again, you get a lot of athletes of what you call it out there have used steroids, used pro hormones and stuff like that. They wouldn't know that there was herbs and foods out there that you can use in order to help to heal the body, to balance out whatever crap or whatever hardship that they've put inside themselves, which they shouldn't, that they now regret. Okay, so I'm letting you know, herbalism, three treasure herbalisms and food. They wouldn't know about Yadi Alleman over here with Tibetan medical qigong that there's certain exercise let's say that if you got joint pain uh, if you got joint pain you got cancer in your body from taking the uh, whatever the heck that you took and you got impotence and what you call it like that yadi what could a person do for that i have an entire program called male sexual qigong also have female sexual qigong that's designed to improve the uh, the hormone production in the form of testosterone progesterone um, and the other hormones that are produced by the body, when those are abundant, you know, the mm-hmm. serotonin, the dopamine, the immunoglobin, the, the natural killer cells, when, when the hormones take charge from doing male sexual qigong, the difference between, say, taking an herb or taking a drug is that it's your body's own natural production, and you haven't put anything foreign in the body, but you're able to get your, your hormone levels back to what they should be, which will help you develop more muscle, and you know it'll give you the stamina and, and the recovery, because you have the, the testosterone in the case of guys. You know, mm-hmm. there's also 
I've, I've written a book about this. I have a training program. I've studied with several teachers and eight that actually were able to give me techniques that I was able to put together in one system. It, in my opinion, if you're looking for a non-drug, non-herb, inexpensive way to do it, you learn male sexual qigong. That way you don't have to keep constantly buying supplements. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but there, you know, it's more than one way to skin a cat. You know, if the supplement's helping you stay on it, do the exercises. You have two things working for you. Uh, in my case, I didn't, at the time I was studying, I was more interested in Qigong. So when I learned um, sexual Qigong, there were a bunch of holes in it. I studied, there were a bunch of books on Amazon, a bunch of, uh, you know, people offering programs. But I tell you, aside from the theory, okay, here yeah, we're going to get more testosterone, more energy, more vitality, a lot of them don't actually know the techniques. Either they're way too time-consuming or they're dangerous, you know, something like swinging weights from your private parts. You know, <laughs> and, I, yeah, I mean, I learned male sexual qigong from the collective minds of, of eight qualified teachers, but they had all studied, um, you know, for many years. A lot of them had put in... I've only been studying for 15 years, but a lot of them have been studying in the neighborhood of maybe 40 years. And, you know, all of my teachers are upwards of 70. I've, I even had one teacher in his 80s father a child. So if you want a testimonial to the effectiveness of male sexual qigong, look at that. Imagine being 80 years old, still, one, sexually vital, and two, able to father a child at 80. So basically, Yadi, what you're saying is if you take some type of pro-hormone, steroid or something like that, and your endocrine system is either not working or you're not producing tests like you used to and it's all wicky-wacky or whatever, you got a Tibetan medical Qigong movement that can actually help with that. Am I correct? Yeah, I've got a set that takes about 25 minutes a day to do that can increase all of your hormone levels. You can get hormone panels, uh, saliva hormone panels, and, and check your levels. You should see a difference within 21 days, within three weeks of doing the training. Okay, super. Now, also of interest, you also have a tape series out there on increasing uh, uh, increasing strength or something like that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Qigong for Strength and Power, which is one of 11 instructional. We have another one coming out soon. But Qigong for Strength and, and Power is more of a bone marrow muscle tendon set, which was handed down from my teacher, uh, his training was uh, in martial arts, so very similar to the Hongar sets, like the iron wire that, that build up the, um, you know, the fascia, the connective tissue, you know, and the bone marrow to make the Superman that can withstand uh, a heavy amounts of punishment. Yeah, the uh, Qigong for Strength and Power is designed to give you those results, although our techniques are based more on uh, other Chinese arts. You know. Okay, that sounds interesting to you, Rick. Yes, definitely. Um, like like he was saying earlier, there's more than one way to skin a cat. And um, um, with Qigong, there's um, many different ways to uh, develop the Qi. Um, um, you know, everybody has their own techniques and, and what works and what doesn't. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that. But one of the things I do want to emphasize, and this was emphasized by my Sifu all through my, my training with him, was uh, it, it's slow. Mm -hmm. Slow, deliberate p practice and concentration. Mm -hmm. um, your mind has to be in tune with the body while you're doing it, and, you know, in order to feel what you need to feel and, and separate the different muscles and be able to move different muscles and, and not move other muscles, tense certain muscles and not tense other mm -hmm. muscles. So mm -hmm. it all takes a lot of concentration and, and slow work. You're talking about whole body awareness and integration, right? Yes, definitely. definitely. Okay, and not to be able, it's like a lot of times in hypnosis, they actually like focus on your toes, squeeze your toes as hard as you can for 10 seconds, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, relax. Then they go, go to your calves. Focus on your calves. Squeeze your calves as hard as you can for 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Mm -hmm. Relax. By going through that, you actually learn how to control a consciously, uh, develop a conscious link between your mind and that muscle group to be able to control them uh, at any point. And that is one of the secret of master athletes is that master athletes have the ability to not only control but to be aware 
of what is happening with every point of their body. And that's what a lot of uh, good athletes out there just hasn't got to that particular level yet is getting that awareness. And that's where Hungar therapy and a lot of uh, uh, Tibetan Qigong and all this other type stuff comes in. It's for you to get a whole body aware and whole body uh, integration and a whole body awareness that will take you from being a good athlete to being the ultimate athlete in your life. And this is exactly what this is show was all about. This is not just some kind of... Uh, 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 feel good type of show or whatever it's out there if you're a bad athlete it's going to turn you to a good athlete from a good athlete it's going to turn you into the ultimate athlete or potential that you already have and you saying Malik that's bull crap and I'm telling you okay well you know if you don't if you don't believe me just try the science for yourself again like I said if you just study what foods that you need in order to build your spirit mind and your body that is what I want you to focus on Marshall do you hear me Marshall. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, I was. Yeah, I was saying this. The foods I want you to because you're training with me right now. Okay. And a lot of times your thing is that you want to win the YMCA races. So I'm going to break it down using these three people exactly how you would do that. All right. From uh, Michael over here, you will learn about three treasure herbalism. What herbs would you need, or what foods would you need in order to, uh, uh, in order to take into your body to optimize yourself spiritually, to optimize yourself mentally, and optimize yourself physically for my talking about spirits a lot of time when you're running yadi don't a lot of times you got a lot of self-doubt like when man i'm tired man i wish i could stop man i wish wish this was you get distracted am i right marshall oh yeah yeah <laughs> I, I know you're breaking the question to me but yeah there's, uh, there's, there's plenty of times where you feel that uh i feel like oh man i was i was when to ate that you know Burger before I started running, or you know, <laughs> and I wish I was stretching. We always have uh, when you get to uh, that point of fatigue, you start to think. Yep, that is and actually, it, and, uh, and then that's when you, you get distractions, and, and then you, when you start to think, you, you kind of lose that motion in your running. You start uh, your steps don't come as in, in tune where you lose your use your rhythm in your running, and uh, yeah, the focus is uh is, is a big thing. Right? That is. Focus is. That is, and uh, there are certain herbs and food out there that you can do in order to, uh, in order to obtain peace of mind. Ain't that right, Michael? Exactly. Yes. And while you're eating that, while you're running, you eliminated the self-talk. Only going to be doing the positive thing. Therefore, your time and everything would actually begin to increase. And that's the one of the things that um, I want people to be aware of. And again, like I was saying on the on the chi part, which is the mental part, what foods can you eat in order for you to make better grades in school? Okay, we already covered about the ginkgo bubble and everything. And then we also going on uh, about the uh, about the ginseng and everything for the energy and everything that you need. Because a lot of times we get tired, don't we, Marshall? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we get tired. So you take a quality ginseng and quality. Like I said, I don't know if y'all was heard this before. I said, how many people here know Jack LaLanne? Everybody here know Jack LaLanne? Oh, God, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. everybody know Jack LaLanne. Jack LaLanne's secret was this. 80% raw, 20% cooked. Is anybody here not for that? No, Jack Lillian, that was the man. God rest. Yes, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not for the raw part, actually. <laughs> no. um, you know, everybody's got different theories on that, but in, you know, in Chinese culture, uh, basically they cook foods because the cooked makes, food is good for your digestive system. Yeah, cooked food so is I good. I think um, maybe during the summer months, maybe some raw foods, but during the winter definitely cook your food right okay um, and that's my, yeah all right Chinese medicine will always tell you that raw foods give you dampness uh-huh and you know they'll discourage you from eating raw food but I mean again you know it's it's not just one method sometimes everyone's body's a little different you know what I mean uh-huh uh-huh some, somebody might be really vital eating raw foods and somebody might you know develop the dampness it really just depends on the person it does. It really does depend on the person. But everybody here, everybody here can agree that Jack Lelane definitely walked what he talked. Am I right? 
for sure. Oh, that's gotcha. correct. Yeah. yeah, he was swam across that channel to Alcatraz and back, uh, 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 handcuffed and everything. He told at the at like seventy to eighty, uh, he would tow like eighty um road tr- uh, eighty rowboats or whatever behind um behind each other. I mean, he was definitely the man. To, he was definitely the man, and that was off. Uh, like I said, live food creates a live body. I mean, even if you do cook it, that don't mean you cook all the life out of it. Am I right? Mm-hmm. You don't cook all. You can yeah. steam it. You can steam it and steam it, still keep some of the vital stuff in there, but you can definitely got to make sure of that. And then what I'm um, going on, uh, you know, with the exercises that he does, uh, a lot of people don't know that Jack he did some hunger based type of exercises too with those finger push ups and all that other stuff. And y'all do that, don't y'all in hunger class, um, Rick? Yes, definitely. Yes. Yeah, I'll do those same push-ups that Jack Lane do to get yourself all tough and stuff like that. And then again with the Tibetan, um, the Tibetan Chi Kung stuff, I bet uh, if you're older and stuff out there, got aches and pains and stuff, you may not want to look at exercise and stuff. You may want to look at Tibetan medical Chi Kung. You wonder why those people there in the East, every time you see a film for them, they're not lifting weights and running. They doing Tai Chi and run. They doing Tai Chi and those Chi Kung exercises. Am I right, people? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. That's what they yeah. do. Why? Because that thing is more focused on more on the health, not the fitness part. So I'm telling y'all, the athletes and parents and stuff like that, you need to start looking at things at an Eastern perspective. Understand why that they do things so that you can do it and observe the uh, and take the benefits and everything for yourself. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and um I'm going to go ahead and um wrap this up now. Marshall Davis, uh, with Massage Avengers. What have you learned from today's show? Uh, I learned a, a great amount of things. Um, I learned to, uh, you know, like you said, to I, it just changed the whole athlete perspective mindset to more of, the, of becoming the, the preventive and the, a, a whole athlete, not just uh, relying on the physical, the physical abilities. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then actually doing these practices and a uh, lot of the exercises and uh, living lifestyle for for long with that uh, your physical, you know. Abilities, you know, we just not. I don't think, like you said, uh, like I said, with time, they don't, they don't have the time to actually teach, like the coach, they don't have the extra whole time to teach everybody how mm-hmm. to, you know, for that their lifestyle. That's more advanced, and um, I think that's where we really do lack in uh, the sports world. Mm-hmm. Okay, I, but, uh, I, I learned a lot from these guys. I took, took some notes. <laughs> okay, that's super. Okay, Rick, what did you learn from today's show? Oh, I learned from Mike uh, um, several things about some herbs and um, what they do inside your body and how to enhance some of the training um, that I'm doing. Um, okay. And also uh, from the week, the uh, different uh, techniques of, uh, of Qigong. Okay. So it's been a very informative show here, yes. Super Michael, what did you learn? Oh, I think, um, you know, I think, um, yeah, you renewed my interest in in um, investigating qigong, which was real good, and then with uh, Rick's exercises are, are real good, too. Um, but I think the main thing, the main message is you've got to do a little bit of everything to be that complete athlete or, or have that good health. Okay, that's super. And finally, Yadi, what did you learn from today's show? Uh, well, from Michael, I definitely picked up a couple of herbs that well, it just reminded me mm-hmm. about my goji. Um <laughs> From, let's see, uh, oh, wow, uh, I learned a little bit from listening to Marshall, too, just, you know, what he was doing in his training, mm-hmm. and as always, and I forget, uh, Sifu Rick, I- I'm going to be trying those one-finger push-ups, you know what I mean, that's the next step for me, uh, and-, and I'm inspired to talk to people who are actively training, you know, a lot of times we're talking to people, we're trying to motivate them, but it's great to kind of have a meeting of the minds of people who guide others, so I-, I appreciate this this show. Okay, well, that's what definitely is the show all about. It's for people who's watching it to learn things to actually to enhance their training. Again, like I said before, uh, I can do 100 one-arm push-ups on each side, and that comes from my hunger, well, from my hunger based training. From you know, Sifu Cuthbertson and uh, Grandmaster Floyd Mans, right, Rick? 
Yes, very good, very good martial artist in this area, yes. Okay, so I've been doing this since 2000. Now, you know, I've been doing the hunger based training or the strength, tendon, strength uh, development and stuff since, you know, since high school, since I was training with them. Now, this is what happens now. At 42 years old, I'm able to do 80 to 100 one-arm push-ups, okay? Now, a lot of people like that says that's of amazing, but if you've been doing it for 14 years, is it amazing? Not you. You know, <laughs> it's, yes, it's still amazing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah it's still amazing. It's still amazing. <laughs> I try to tell. I try so, to tell. So you work for a year and are able to do that, but you're working for 14 years and can still do that. You That's know, well, it took me amazing. 14 years to get up to it, but it's just the whole thing. I've been practicing. If we've pra a lot of people don't understand the biggest secret from becoming a bad athlete to becoming the ultimate athlete is number one thing is what kung fu is all about: time and effort. Exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. you put the time and effort in with the right information like we're putting in the show. You'll be able to do and keep up with your practice. You'll be able to do a uh, you'll be able to do the in immovable horse stance. You'll be able to break bricks with your palms and all this other type of stuff. You'll be able to do 8100 one on put. You'll be able to bench press 405, uh, 405 or whatever. It's easy because you've put the time in to be able to do these certain things okay and that's the point i'm trying to get to out to everyone right now okay um uh now from what i've actually learned from today going on again with the uh three treasure Herb, i forgot about the astragalus and my, my michael reminded me about the astragalus anybody here ever took an astragalus before for sure no Oh my OMG! Let me tell you what you call it like that. That is yeah, ginseng will make you feel good, but that is stragglers. OMG will make you feel great. Am I right, fellas? Who have taken it? Yeah, great. Oh, yeah. Yeah, long, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. So if you want to try something for a pre-workout supplement, get you some astragalus and you try that stuff out with whatever that you what you call it doing, and you will feel like well, I used to take that at work with me all the time. I I you know don't supposed to, but I used to take it with my caffeine, and y'all know that's not good, right? <laughs> But I used to have a yeah. stragglers in the cap and my coffee. Oh, <laughs> I was up all third shift. So I usually pop that when I have to work third shift at a stragglers. And the ginseng, that'll make you feel good. Would get you feel um high, you know, feel uh good, vital and stuff, healthy or whatever. But when you really got to kick it, you stick that stragglers in there and wow. I mean like, yeah, you're just ready to go. Okay? That was my secret wet me. And it's amazing how you forget about these little treasures, you know? You know, as time goes on. Now, from um, from uh, Rick Panico, yeah, we got the uh, fingertip push-ups and stuff. I have to get back on towards doing that again. I was remember that. And then from Yachty, we're talking about the uh, chi about the Chi Kong. It, it develop flexibility in your waist and everything. And from Marshall, I get from you know, I just can't let him all my secrets. So he else he'll beat me in training uh, <laughs> next <laughs> next week. <laughs> Yeah, we we you see me and him. I train with I train with Marshall Webb. I'm teaching him stuff. We do like a thousand a thousand ab exercises every time we get together, Marshall. Yes, sir. Yeah, and he actually can hang with me, and that's the only reason I'm training. <laughs> We hit it. We get that core real good. But we're gonna. I just started him off two weeks. I just started him off two weeks just with training. Uh, you notice a big increase in your running since we started, didn't you? Actually, uh, yes, I dropped about a uh, minute and a half just uh, in the first two weeks. Yeah, yeah, and that's, I'm just teaching him some, some basic stuff about core, and then I'm teaching him some basic Qigong stuff, but he doesn't know I'm teaching him Qigong because I'm teaching him through it, teaching him it through a, uh, through a personal training perspective. <laughs> you know, so you don't recognize stuff. I mean, you got to have a good eye for that type thing. Okay. We're going to go ahead and end it up with everybody's contact information. If someone's willing to uh, looking to contact you, that's is, um, also for you as well, uh, Marshall. Starting off with you, Yachty. Okay. To find me, you can just, Yachty is a pretty uncommon name. It's Y-A-D-I. Last name is A-L-A-M-I-N. Just Google me. Um, my website for Charlotte Reflexology is charlottereflexology.com. My telephone number is 704-993-8321. I've got a class on Friday and Sunday in Qigong. If you're interested in body work, just give me a call. Super Rick. 
Yes, I'm Rick Panico, and I teach Hungar Kung Fu. My school's located on Charlotte Highway, which is Route 21, uh, exit 33 off of uh, 77. I have classes Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, 6.30 to 8.30, and Saturdays, 11 to 1. Um, you can check out my Facebook page, uh, the Hungar Kung Fu Academy in Mooresville. My website is under Rick Panico, R-I-C-K-P-A-N-I-C-O, uh, dot com. And my phone number is 704-663-6305. And thank you again for inviting me. You're welcome, Rick. Michael? Yeah, Michael Chitowski. Um, I can be contacted through my herb company, East Earth Trade Winds. You can find it on Facebook by searching for East Earth Trade Winds. And then the website is East Earth Trade.com. That's www.eastearthtrade.com. And we have all our contact information is on the website. And you can, you know, buy those stragglers or any herbs or, or send me questions about tonic herbs or things like that. I'll be glad to answer your questions. Super. And Marshall. Yes, uh, first of all, I want to thank you for having me on the show. I uh, okay. appreciate that. And then my, my contact information is uh, candidtouch.com. And uh, that's why that's really, I do my sports massage. And um, my email is uh, massageadventures at gmail.com. If you want to email for an appointment or call at 803 And uh, I'm conveniently located in Charlotte, Ralph Alvaro, Road, if you're on the east side of town. Okay, that's super. Again, for a, re, uh, a recap of everything, uh, this is the stuff that I'm studying in order to beat Marshall Davis, my training partner at the Simmons YMCA. <laughs> I'm studying three treasure herbalism, things that I need in order to develop my spirit, mind, and body. Um, uh, you can get that um, through Michael. I um, study also the um, uh, the hunger based exercises and stuff, and that's from um, uh, if you're interested in that type of thing, you can contact uh, Mr. Rick Panico, and that's with the hunger uh, Kung Fu School in Mooresville, and that's to help to strengthen up the tendons and your ligaments, and then also for Qi Kung or Tibetan medical Qi Kung, if for accelerated healing of the body, and also if you're taking pro hormone steroids, whatever the heck you did, even. Uh, prescription drugs or whatever your body's just not working the way it is supposed to contact Yadiel Allerman the uh, uh, Kung therapist so basically I'm going to be using hard style Kung to develop my tendons and ligaments uh, soft style Kung in order to accelerate my body's ability to heal itself and herbalism in order to cultivate myself uh, spirit mind and body in order to beat the crap out of um, Marshall who's my training partner <laughs> 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 so I hope you're taking notes, cause when I when, when I really I'm t- I told you right now I'm out of shape. Although I bench four or five and I do a hundred push ups, I'm still out of shape. Okay, so I'm telling you what I'm doing. So, you know, it's on you to take advantage with that. Okay, everyone, uh, this is Malik L Train, host of Health Awareness Talk, and um, that's it for our show today. If you got any questions, please give us a contact at w uh, support at uh, supportbroadcast.com. Everyone, have a wonderful day or night wherever you are. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Good night. And all y'all too. See y'all.